All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these were the problems you were supposed to do. Let's go ahead and do them together. So the square root of 27, uh, we can break that down uh, to its square numbers. So let's make a list of our squares again. 1, 4, 9, 16, uh, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. We'll just do those ones. So which of these numbers divides evenly into 27? Well, 25 doesn't work. 16 doesn't work. 9 does work. I can break 27 down to 9 times 3. And then that means I can make the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, which makes this 3 root 3. 98, and let's see, 81 is not divisible, 64 isn't divisible, 49 is divisible. So that's the square root of 49 times 2 which is the square root of 49 times the square root of 2, which is 7 root 2. This third one here, root 10 times root 15, is the same thing as root 10 times 15, which is root 150. Now let's simplify it. Uh, let's see, does 100 work? No. 81? No. 64? No. 49? No. 36? No. 25? Yes. 25 goes into 150 six times. So this is root 25 times root 6. And root 25 we know is 5, so that's 5 root 6 as our solution. And finally, this last division rule is root 4 over root 25, which gives us 2 fifths as our solution. All right, if you've got uh, questions on these ones, make sure you address them. Otherwise, let's go ahead and move to the next set of examples here about rationalizing the denominator. Um, an expression is not considered simplified if there is a radical in the denominator, right? If your answer looks like this, this is not simplified. Uh, and again, this is just a convention that mathematicians decided someday, right? There's no like, uh, specific there's some instances where it makes sense um, but it really is like again this is something that a bunch of mathematicians got together and decided let's all do this the same way so we're gonna simplify it the same way okay uh, that's why we do this but we do have to take a couple of steps to have that make that happen and those steps are called rationalizing the denominator so in order to get the root out of the denominator, we have to do what's called rationalize it. Uh, it's called rationalizing it because right now this isn't a rational number. This is an irrational number. So we are going to rationalize it. So how do we do that? Well, what I want you to notice is that root 2 right, is what we need to make not a root anymore. So. Think about this. This is a side example here. Back when we were looking at the previous video, we learned that we can break the, uh, that when we multiply two roots together, um, it's really just the root of this times this. Okay. Notice that when, when we multiply roots of the same number together, we end up with a square number, right? The square root of 36 is 6. So, to rationalize, we multiply by uh, a root. Specifically, the same root, right? S let's look at it as an example here. This is a root 2 down here, okay? I need this root 2 to not be a root 2 anymore. I need to rationalize it. And I learned up here that if I multiply a root by itself, it becomes not a root. Root 6 times root 6 is positive 6. That means that if I were to multiply this bottom thing by root 2, I could make it not root 2 anymore. However, I can't just do that because that would change the expression. So I need to multiply the numerator by the same number. Pointing out just as an aside right here, root 2 over root 2 is really just 1, right? That's the same thing. 
I'm not changing the number. I'm just uh, changing the look of the number. Okay, this is the same thing as finding a common denominator. Okay, so let's do this. Square root of 5 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 5 times 2. And down here we have the square root of 2 times 2. This is the square root of 10 on top. And this is the square root of 4 on bottom. But notice the square root of 4 has a number, right? It's a, it's a square number. So this is root 10 over 2. Again, any time we have a root in the denominator, if we multiply by itself on top and bottom, the numerator, or the, excuse me, the denominator just becomes itself. Notice, root 2 times root 2 is 2. I did some steps in between here to show you what happened, but root 2 times root 2 is 2. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. So we need to multiply it by itself. This example over here is a little bit different, though. Notice that I can't just multiply by root 2. If I did that, this would be root 2 times 7 plus root 2, and that doesn't work because I'd have to distribute the root 2, and that's 7 root 2 plus 2. Notice that there's still a root there. We need to get rid of the root. And so what we're going to do to do that is multiply by this same thing, but we're going to change that to a negative. So let me show you. This, instead of multiplying by 7 plus root 2, we're going to multiply by 7 minus root 2. Watch what happens when we do that. This set here needs to be foiled. Let's do that math down here. 7 plus root 2 times 7 minus root 2. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times negative root 2 is negative 7 root 2. Two time, root 2 times 7 is positive 7 root 2. And root 2 times root 2 is negative 2, right? Root 2 times negative root 2 is negative 2. Well, what happens in the middle? Negative 7 root 2 plus positive 7 root 2 cancels out. So this is just 49 minus 2, or 47. So in the denominator here, we get 47, because I multiplied by this with a negative. The 3 we distribute, 21 minus 3 root 2. And then we're done. So when rationalizing the denominator, okay, we're multiplying by itself. If there's a root 2 in the denominator, that's just root, multiply it by root 2, it becomes a non-root. If there's other operations, we, we multiply by the same thing, but we switch the sign. All right, there is a couple of practice for you. These ones over here, they take a little bit of work, right? The, these ones take a little practice. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of practice problems for you there. Again, make sure you address any confusion um, on those problems. Uh, but let's go ahead and go do that practice, and then uh, we'll see you in the next video.